It's your boy Nungun in the house, back with another bang on video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy. I'm very happy that you guys came onto the live. It was a beautiful video. I think you guys, I think this was the best support that I've ever got. And uh, I personally expected 10 to 20 maximum amount of people coming up during the initial times, but we peaked at around 52. 52 people, unbelievable. That is, that is huge. For me, it's really huge. And we did somewhere around 23 hours of watch time. That is a huge amount, of, that's a huge chunk of a watch time that you guys have given me. I loved it. It was really great to answer your queries and probably I think I've answered a lot of questions regarding this, uh, at least for now. But uh, just because I've got all the positivity from you guys since the live came in. So I guess I think we could do live next week as well. If you guys want me to do a, a live next week, I'll put up a poll. Let me know about it. But other than that, you can also comment and let me know which part of the poll that you like the most. I think you can tell me about uh, the whole situation regarding, I think your suggestions were unbelievable. I think you guys, some some of them wanted Kitinio. Some of them were believing that there is a plan where Ozil fits in. I really uh, respect your decisions and uh, your opinions. It's different. It would be different than me, but my job is to give you the information that uh, related, It's whichever is related to Arsenal. So that, that is what I brought in front of you. So let's move on with the first news. Alex Lacazette has opened up about Aubameyang uh, and his future about Aubameyang. Lacazette says, so we don't really speak about his future, him and Aubameyang. I'm just going to wait like everyone else. And I just hope he's going to tell me before the press. But to be honest, we stopped talking about this because at the beginning it can, it can be funny. But long term, you can start to be annoying because you want something that is not maybe the way we like. And I don't want to be the guy being a bit annoying. Completely agree with what Alex Lagazette has to say. I think the whole future depends upon uh, Aubameyang now. I think he's made up his mind. He's just waiting to see where Arsenal finish. James Olly tweets out, Arteta is perhaps the perfect man to try and drag Arsenal out of Manchester City's shadow, given he is on a similar journey himself as a coach. City has won their last seven meetings, all by at least two goals, dating back to the 20. 2017 FA Cup semi-finals. It is going to be a huge and wild ride this Saturday. But moving on, Arsenal have reportedly lodged an offer for Lille centre-half Gabriel Magalhaes but face a battle to sign him. Well, according to uh, a lot of publications, Napoli are leading the chase. We all know that about the, that Napoli are interested in signing the 22-year-old 20, Brazilian and another club interested in is uh, Everton. But it looks like Napoli were prepared to pay £20 million for the defender. Gabriel joined Lille from Hawaii in his uh, native Brazil back in 2017 and his uh, this season that went on I think he, he was an, he was a phenomenon for them well moving on Arsenal have de delivered a double injury update on Baird Leno and Callum Chambers well Baird Leno sustained a moderate uh, ligament sprain during the loss against Brighton and we all know what Chambers happened against Chelsea you know ruptured his anterior cruciate ligament of his left knee so according to club's official website Leno's update is now participating in outside running with the aim of starting ball drills in the next few days, progressed to the next stage of his recovery and is now running and integrating outside with light ball work, will continue to work hard throughout the season, close uh, season period with the aim of being back to full training as soon as possible this calendar year. In Chambers' absence, Gunners head coach Mikel Arteta has tinkered with this. We all know the central defensive options have been completely tinkered. And it has been Scott Mustafi, David Luiz, Rob Holding, Sierra Kolasinac and Kieran Tierney. And these are the options that they are playing with. Well, not only this, let me throw a very different stat to you guys. Arsenal have played 36 Premier League games and uh, Mikel Arteta has been in charge for 18 of them. So, uh, Arsenal have actually taken two penalties in 36 games this season, which is a really shocking amount. But not only this, uh, in the times that Emery and Lindbergh were in charge of Arsenal, uh, Arsenal have won only five uh, compared to Arteta's six. Games drawn have been more, eight and six. Uh, Arteta has lost only four games and goals scored are more. Expected goals were less, but somehow Arteta has made Arsenal score more goals. Shots total that were taken, 174. Penalties taken, nil. Nil. And goals conceded, 18. Well, these are the Premier League stats, okay? And uh, expected goals against, uh, well, expected were more. But goals conceded are very less, 9 less. And penalties conceded are 2. And cards are red, cards are 4. So, well, I don't completely justify whatever the red cards that we've ever received under Mikel Arteta's uh, reign. Because I, I have, uh, those are, those are the, a lot of controversial decisions, to be fair. But moving on, 
With the technical endorsement of Edu, the door to Johnny Mikel Arteta's side is more open than it was a few months ago for Felipe Coutinho. More on it, keep watching the video. Ozil did indeed have a back complaint at first, according to James Olley, a nagging problem he has struggled with in previous seasons, but the injury has improved now. He is said to be training professionally and has refrained from going overtly public with his frustrations during this long spell. Well, not only this, uh, James Benge has actually come up with something. He says uh, Arteta is actually working very closely with hierarchian owners over transfers, but doesn't know what can be done. And in regular talks, he's supportive uh, about Kronkies. We are going to talk about the whole Arteta situation. Ozil, Genduzi are out because of pure footballing reasons. And he would not want to lose out on a player called Alex Lacazette. Well, last month that uh, there was a standoff uh, developed between with Arsenal keen to offload Mesut Ozil, primarily because of his wages. And while Ozil wants to see out the final year of his contract, Mikel Arteta is happy to use him as a squad rotation player, but his huge wage demands are, uh, uh, demands greater involvement and so the club are keen to recoup his salary and reinvest. Let's see if that's going to be happening or not. Well, finally, Mikel Arteta has given a press conference, pre-match conference of the FA Cup semi-finals. Here's what Arteta said about Kronkies. He says, I speak with them and I have a really, really good and open relationship. That's why when you mentioned that sending a message to the Kronkies, I am surprised because I don't need to. Uh, I have the phone call and I speak to them. And they have been very, very supportive for, from the very first day that I joined the club. They were very much participating in the decision to bring me back here and same with Vinay, Edu. There are no gaps or frictions there. And talking about whether uh, uh, he was sending messages to the board, he says no. And if that was misinterpreted, we work so closely with the all hierarchy all at the club to put a plan together that we need to take his this club forward. Everybody has the same ambition. We are on all of this together. And uh, he says, we don't know where we are going to finish and how much impact financially that is going to have. We are going to have to sit down at the end of the season to see what we are able to do. But we have been working with the club to put different plans together. And also Adidas said that he's, the clubs are in talks with Ceballos and he doesn't want to lose uh, Lacazette. And if all goes well between the two clubs of Atletico Madrid and, and Arsenal, Thomas Partey will be an Arsenal player. Well, let's see. It looks like that Thomas Partey already has an agreement with Arsenal, but well, let's see. Well, talking about why Ozil is not picked uh, in the Arsenal team or in the bench, Arteta said, pure football reasons. My only ambition is the best squad and the best players who gave us the best opportunity to win the game. Make of this what you will. But uh, I think Arteta wants him to be there. Well, talking about David Silva, Mikel Arteta has to say this. He says, if I could read the articles in the comments when he joined the Premier League, they were saying that the player is so small, he doesn't have the physicality, he won't adapt. What David has done in this league uh, has been incredible. Again, the level of consistency to play the way he has done with the amount of goals, assists and chances that he creates every single season in tight spaces against very low blocks time and time again is incredible. And uh, talking about uh, Pep Guardiola has opened up about Arsenal's improvement. He says they have something special ready already. They have a team spirit that Mikel has created. They've started to create something special for this club. Well, Arsenal's new home kit for the 2020-2021 season is officially released in Australia today. Well, it's looking very beautiful, isn't it? It's very gorgeous. But moving on, Aubameyang's future. Arteta opens up about Aubameyang's future. Arteta says, I've always been very positive about it. I don't have the key to the future and in football anything is possible. But I see his reactions. I know that he's happy. I talk to him a lot and if we are able to do it, I think we can do it. And uh, uh, I think talking about the assurances, Arteta says, uh, he was given certain assurances when he actually take, uh, took over uh, the Arsenal job. Arteta says, the context has changed. Nobody knew what COVID-19 was going to do. We didn't know where we could take the team. The team was in really difficult moment. Sometimes we were looking down and don't forget relegation. Oh, Jesus, we won one in 13 and we want to move this forward. I'm very ambitious. I can only think of this football club moving in one direction and I'm going to push with everything that I have. And my job is to do that. Well, not only this, let us talk about Alex Lacazette. There's a banter with Pierre Mirka Bamiang. Alex Lacazette tweeted out, so lucky I still am waiting for mine because he's actually waiting for his signed uh, shirt from Pierre Mirka Bamiang. Aubameyang replied, you better I don't speak. Well, talking about Alexander, uh, actually Mikel Arteta praised in his pre-match conference, uh, uh, praised uh, Alex Lacazette. He says, I really like Alex. 
I said even before I joined here, he's the type of striker I really like. The way he can link play, he's a massive competitor, he hates to lose, he goes for every ball, you see in every challenge how he is ready to go, how hard he works. Well, big good news for all the Arsenal fans who could actually go to the Emirates. Boris Johnson has announced football fans should be allowed back onto stadiums by October in a huge boost for next season. Supporters have been banned from entering ground since football returned. We all know what's wrong, but now the Prime Minister has revealed fans will be allowed back early on in the 2020-2021 season, subject to trial runs. Pilot tests will begin, will begin as early as next month with a view to having fans in stadiums as soon as possible. Johnson claimed on 1st of August, we will pilot larger gatherings in venues like sports stadia with a view to a wider reopening in the autumn. From October, we intend to bring back audience in stadia. Well, these were the news of the day. I hope you enjoyed whatever came your way. All the views and news and everything about Arsenal comes on this platform every single day twice. So sit back, relax and enjoy all the news that comes on this platform. I will see you in my next video. Until then, cheers and don't forget to subscribe.